Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Thanks for inviting me over and welcome to Crochet Podcast episode 132. Today I'm going to share with you my latest finished object and a craft room tour. I'm taking you around everywhere. But before then, I want to congratulate the winner from episode 131. Congratulations to Lorna Phillips. Lorna says, your eyelash stole is truly glamorous. I love it. For tutorials, if I want to make the item, I first make sure I have time. Then I get everything to crochet as you work. As soon as I understand the instructions, I pause the video and finish the rows. I go on like that to the end. If I get confused along the way, I go back or replay the whole video as many times as I need to. Follow, and I follow the same method of pause and work until I get done. That's great. Thank you so much, Lorna. Send me an email, krista.secretyarnery.com, and I will send you a copy of my latest pattern. And if you want to win a free pattern, just keep watching and I'll tell you how to do it. And now it's time for Finished Object. Yes, it is singular this week, but so great for Easter, for spring. How cute is that? So this is my sunburst granny square. So easy for so many different projects and it is so, it's like the easiest way to turn a circle into a square. Just with the one row. So you're 100% circle and then you go to 100% square in one easy round. So that's why I love this pattern so much. Plus you can use any colors that you want at all. How cute is, are those colors? Right? It may or may not be becoming a sweater, but not, not right now. <laughs> Eventually it'll become a sweater, but how cute is that? So it doesn't have to be loud and proud. You could do whatever colorways you like. And just by changing the colors, it kind of almost changes the look of the granny square, doesn't it? So pretty. I think this is going to be, or is this a sleeve? It's either a sleeve or a back panel for an upcoming sweater. I love it. This is with Saver from Ice Yarns. And this is also, this is a favorite. And, and there is some Kenyan acrylic in there also. I mixed them together because I love these colors so much. So that is my sunburst granny square. It is also a written pattern on my website, secretyarnery.com. And it is also both right and left-handed tutorials. Plus there's the Cole's notes version or the musical version where I don't talk. I just have the instructions on the screen and there's some music playing and you can crochet along with me for that. Depending on how much instruction you want and which one you prefer, it is all available. Right-handed full tutorial, left-handed full tutorial. Cole's notes version, so the fast version without so much talking or with no talking, and also the written pattern on my website. So this is covered everywhere and I hope you love it. I will link all of that down in the comments down below. The sunburst granny square is also my nemesis pillow. So this is also sunburst granny square, but made, oh, it's almost, this is a little bit different. My sunburst is a lot easier. This has puff stitches in it. This row here is puff stitches, which is fine. It's easy enough to do, but it uses a bit more yarn. So my version of it is just little clusters. So it uses a lot less yarn and it goes a little bit faster. Same kind of look, but this is the original. And I have a written pattern and tutorial for making this pillow. There is a playlist for making these pillows. If you're interested in that, I'll link them in the comments under this video. And if I forget to put the links, which sometimes I do, go ahead and just do a Google search for Secret Yarnery plus what you are looking for. So Secret Yarnery plus Nemesis Pillow playlist, and it'll pop right up. And now it's time for your questions. The first question is from Anita Ludman. She says, your yarnery is really fantastic. If you could buy, if you couldn't buy any more yarn because I don't know, there would be a yarn apocalypse or something, how long would your current stash last? With mine, it would probably last a year. 
at, a sna at the snail's pace I'm crocheting, but after that, it wouldn't be worth living anyway without yarn. <laughs> Thanks, Anita. That is a really good question. And I almost kind of know my answer because I order yarn every year-ish. Sometimes it's more than a year. Sometimes it's like 14 months. Sometimes it's like nine months. But lately it's been on the 14 month side. By the time I did run out of yarn where it was like difficult to match your colors, it was difficult to find anything that goes together. Do you want to see what it looks like when you run out of yarn? Let me show you. <laughs> Right? Oh. So I love this stitch. I love this stitch. I have not done a tutorial because I think I don't like the colors at all. I like the colors individually. I don't like them together at all. So this is, this is all I could come up with that went even remotely together. I was completely out of yarn. It, this took about a year. So after about a year, I didn't have enough colors to make anything that was eye-pleasingly attractive. So after that, that was two, at least two yarn hauls ago. So probably two, almost three years ago, two and a half years ago. So now when I'm ordering yarn, I order or I keep my yarnscape plump with all the different shades in the yarns that I like, which usually is Saver. So that is my, whoop, where is it? My top row along here. And also in favorite, that row there. So that, those are my two shelves that I work from. And I try to keep a lot of colors in there, different shades, different tones, so I don't have to do this again. That one right there. So to answer your question, Anita, it would take me, I would say within three years, it would be it would be empty. I wouldn't have enough of anything good to make anything good. It would be kind of just like it'd be like this. Minus the blue cuz I would have used the blue ages ago. And I do have so much white, so much white that if I ran out of white before anything else, I would I would be shocked. I did run out of white the same year. And I mean run out of white. So I keep that stocked and I try to keep my yarnscape plumped in the solids that I can mix and match as best I can. But I would say three years and I would be crying. If you're enjoying this video, hit that thumbs up. Next is from JLoveLace486. They say, I really enjoy your videos. I've been cro crocheting for 50 years on and off. I have six nieces and I'm working on an Afghan for each. My current project is a waffle stitch. I'm stumped for a border. Any suggestions? That is a very good question. And I'm pondering the same issue myself, which I'll be telling you about later. So I can't tell you about my problem right now, but I get what you mean because borders are usually thin. It's like one row or not one row, but one layer of stitches, whereas Waffle Stitch and my project is very thick, it's very dense. So to put a little tiny, like one thickness of border on it is just kind of really flimsy. So you probably have to do like an overlapping border. There are some overlapping ones. I did that border once a long, long time ago, but that might be a solution for you just because those layers or those rounds kind of overlap. But if I come up with anything, I'll let you know because and I'll be showing you what my issue is also. But if you have any suggestions on what we could both do for borders on thicker projects, like a waffle stitch, then let us know in the comments under this video because I would love to know something that would add a finishing edge, but also the same kind of thickness of stitches or at least not flimsy. I don't want a flimsy one layer border. So if you have any ideas, let us both know in the comments under this video. And thank you so much for asking. Next question is from Linda Jakubowski. She says, I'm just curious, what do you do with all that yarn? Do you make items for yourself, family and friends? Do you have an Etsy shop? Do you make items and donate? Great question. And I get that question a lot. So all the things that I make are almost all over here on my finished object shelf, my whip shelf. So to answer your questions, I the yarn I use to crochet and I do keep it, I try to keep it well stocked, especially this shelf behind me with all of the colors 
in the different yarns that I like to use a lot, especially for tutorials. So you could get those same types of yarns very easily accessible across the world. So this I like to keep stocked up and well plumped in all the different colors, and I like to keep it that way. So then the yarn down here on this lower shelf, that is like my go-to. I try to crochet from that shelf because I have enough of it. So these are generally all extras that would be going up onto this top shelf here. And I make items for myself and my home. I don't really gift too much crochet stuff just because of how I was raised and how crochet gifts were treated by my family members when I was a kid. So I don't really give away crochet stuff. I don't really sell crochet stuff either just because of the price point here in, well, plus because I like doing it for myself. I think if I sold crochet, it would take the fun out of it for me because I like to like make something and then I like to love it. I don't want to like nickel and dime or explain why it costs this much money or, you know, no. I just do it for myself and I just want to keep it like fun for me. So I definitely don't sell anything. I do have an Etsy shop. <laughs> it's getting bigger. I'm starting and I'm launching an Etsy shop. So that is Secret Yarnery over on Etsy. I will show that on the screen and also link that in the comments down below or in the cards or this, I can't do it in the cards, in the description box. So that is where I just sell crochet patterns. I don't sell the finished product, but I do sell patterns and I am working on getting all of my patterns up on Etsy. But right now my patterns are all available on my own website website, secretyarnery.com, but I do also want to have them also over on Etsy because I know lots of people like Etsy and it's also a really easy place to keep all of your stuff together. So working on both of those things. So definitely have an Etsy shop and do go check it out if you are also on Etsy. And what I do with my objects is I fold them up real cute and I put them over there on my finished object shelf. I love it. That's where I keep all of my finished objects that I, we're not using. I do have a lot of blankets around the house and slippers and things like that. Stuff that we use is out and around the house, plants and stuff like that too. But finished objects, I keep all on that shelf over there. And that is so if I want to take a new picture for a thumbnail or Instagram or social media of some sort, I have the object just sitting there waiting so I can always go and take new photos of it. I made the mistake of giving away a finished object once and then pretty much had to just give up on that pattern unless I wanted to make that pattern again because I couldn't take a picture of it and I couldn't also do a stitch count or explain to somebody what I did because I didn't have the object. So I definitely keep all of my finished objects. And the last question, is from Mary Jones. Mary says, hi Krista, I have looked for any comments about how you store your yarn, but cannot find the answer to the following question. What do you wrap your yarn in before storing it on your shelves? To me, it looks like plastic. If it isn't, please correct me. I watch your videos each time a new one comes out and enjoy your tips, tricks, and tutorials, and you have a great personality. Thank you so much, Mary, I appreciate that. What I do with my yarn is I just put it away how it comes. So if you order from Ice Yarns or if you order from a yarn manufacturer, they all already come wrapped in plastic. That's how they get shipped. That is how they're transported around the world. And if you are shopping from like a big box store, that big box store unwraps it for you, unpacks it for you, puts it all cute on their shelves, and then you go and buy it and touch it and love it from that store right there. But yarn originally comes wrapped. So I just keep it wrapped. Ice Yarns provides it in these lovely cellophane bags that fit perfectly. So they just arrive in these four ball packs. Well, it's 400 grams, so it depends on what size, uh, like how many balls depends on, or how many balls are in a pack depends on the weight of each ball. So 50 gram balls, there'll be eight in a pack, 100 gram balls or skeins, there'll be four in a pack, etc., etc. So I just keep them in the packs that they are already in. That being said, if I buy yarn from another company or from a big box store where they've already been unwrapped and are not in their original packaging, then I use recycled Ice Yarns bags. Hmm, gotta get my hands working. Recycled Ice Yarns bags or yarns that are bags from yarn that I've already finished, I keep the bags and then I repurpose it to wrap yarn that arrives unwrapped or not from a manufacturer. So that is what is on my 
yarn or how I keep my yarn. And if you want to do the same thing for yourself, there are cellophane bags available on Amazon. I will link all of my crochet favorites in the comments under this video. So I'll link like my, my sharp tip needles and all of the good things that I love, including those bags. So if you don't order from Ice Yarns, you can have, you can keep your yarn just as safe in the bags I'll link down below. And if you're interested in like my Amazon top picks or anything like that, I was thinking we could do like an Amazon favorites. No, I don't wanna do it every month because my favorites don't change. <laughs> I love what I love, but maybe we could do like a spring, summer, fall or something like that. If you're interested in knowing my favorites, let me know in the comments under this video. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments under this video and I'll be happy to answer it in an upcoming podcast. And now it's time for news of the week. Easter weekend, so much fun. If you don't know, I have four school-aged children. The oldest is 17 and the youngest is nine. So we are in holiday mode. And I guess that's another perk of living in Kenya. You can really drag them out. <laughs> I have my kids believing in Santa and the Easter Bunny so much longer than if we lived in Canada or North America. All of that holiday magic. That being said, when they sincerely ask, I do tell them the truth. But until then, we all partake in the mystery and magic of the holidays. Any holiday. Any holiday at all. Any holiday, I'm all about them. I'd tell you more about that, but my kids are right next door. Home from the hall, for home for the holidays. <laughs> so this year we had footprints leading to letters from the Easter Bunny and the Easter Bunny color coded the kids for the candy. So each kid was looking for two different colors of candy or a bubble gum. And that really helps the big kids not power over top of the little kids. It keeps it kind of even and really fun. And we also did an escape room that was pretty fun. I just buy a printable a printable escape room from Etsy and spread it out around my living room and then tell the kids that they are locked in the living room until they solve all the puzzles. And it works out really great. The younger ones look for the clues and the older ones work on solving the puzzles. So it was fabulous. And yes, after that, I switched them all to peeling potatoes. <laughs> I also had a visit from my dear friend Litza. You may remember her as the hand friend from one of the earlier live chats. I think it was episode 26. Can you imagine 26? A long time ago. And she like put her hands up and be like, nope, I don't get it. So I'd have to come up with like a real interesting way or an easy to remember way of teaching her how to do it. And she pointed out while she was here that she has been able in this past year, although she's a year late, she was able in this past year to do the Secret Stitches Cal 2021. So like all of those blocks together all by herself without my help whatsoever, just from the videos. Unbelievable, you would never think that. <laughs> So I'm just so proud of her for getting that done and I owe her a lot. So it was super great that she came over on Easter. We had a nice little catch up. Let me show you the Secret Stitches Cal so you know what I'm talking about. Isn't that great? So it was one new stitch every month for 2021 and then we joined it at the end of the year, like that. It's so cute, right? So she was able to do all of those blocks at home by herself without my help whatsoever. So proud of her. And she's also left-handed, so that is why I have all the left-handed tutorials for Litza. And uh, actually one-third of my students are or were left-handed, which is amazing. I didn't know there's such a huge community, but apparently left-handed people are very creative. So it was great, and that is why I also include left-handed tutorials, no matter what it does for analytics or boosting your channel or how it brings you down. I just love my left-handed students and I love Litza. So she came over, boxes of pizza in hand. Who doesn't love a friend who comes over with food, right? So the kids were fed and we spent the afternoon up here in the yarnery sipping tea and getting caught up. She asked what the Celtic knot poncho was. So I pulled it out and showed her and she was like, oh no, Krista, this has to be a blanket. I have to say it like her. Oh no, Krista, 
this has to be a blanket. <laughs> That's what she said. I was like, gulp. Yup, it really does. It's so fabulous, but clearly unwearable as a poncho. At least in the climate I live in, I've had it for years and I love it and I have never been able to wear it. So sure enough, I sat there unpicking the join I had on it. I hadn't finished the join because I was gonna undo the join and show you how to join, thankfully. So I ended up just undoing the join and then bam, best bed runner ever. So good. I think we need to do a tutorial using a few strands of worsted weight yarn and a massive hook. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments. Would you like to win a free pattern? All you have to do is, have you subscribed to this channel? Go ahead and hit this button under this video right now so you don't miss out on any more fun stuff just like this. Yes, you have to be a subscriber of the channel and answer question of the week. Question of the week is, what name would you use for this weekly podcast? For the Friday live chats, I came up with Hook Yarn and Dish, <laughs> which sums up what we do on Fridays. So we talk about yarn, we talk about crochet, we talk about news and things to eat. So dish could be like dishing the news, or it could also be dishing the dish. So I think that's great. Although I still kind of forget what it is. Hook Yarn and Dish, like Hook Yarn and Sinker. Is that a thing? No. Hook, line, and sinker, right? So we're doing hook yarn, hook yarn and dish. <laughs> I love that. I think it's fun, even though I can't really remember it. But then for this podcast, we'll remember it yet. I will remember it once I've said it a couple times. However, for the weekly podcast, what would you name the weekly podcast? Let me know your ideas in the comments under this video and I'll be picking a subscriber who answers the question to win a free pattern in an upcoming podcast. And now it's time for Temperature Blanket Update. Are you doing the temperature blanket with us this year? I will put the link to my ultimate temperature blanket guide in the comments under this video as well as the description box. Please remember, you will love it. So I did a whole video explaining what it is. If you're like, what's a temperature blanket? I've explained it all in that video. Plus, get you started on your temperature blanket. It is so fun. So what I'm doing this year is using one different color of yarn for whatever high temperature it is that day for like the whole year, 365 rows, 365 days. So I'm using these colors here. So I am using these colors here. So this was hottest and this was coldest. And then I was working on it and I wasn't loving it so much. The colors were like opposite for me. It turned out to be a lot of these colors here a lot of like oranges and pinks and bubble gums, which isn't bad, just not my scene for what I want to live with in my house all the time. So I, instead of doing it this way, I turned it around and I wrote my numbers the other way. So my cold colors are my hot weather and my hot colors are my cold weather. And also for these colors, I used whatever I had here in my yarnscape, actually the second shelf here and also this lower shelf here and I mixed together Favorite and Softly Baby to get the colors that I wanted, to get these colors here. So you can use them together, you can mix Favorite and Softly Baby, but Softly Baby does have a tendency to fray a little bit more on the ends if you are doing tassels, like that little guy in there. Not the end of the world, super, super soft yarn to work with, and it mixes perfectly with Favorite. So you don't have to use the same yarn as I am because I'm mixing two different kinds. In a perfect world, you would use the colors, like you would use all the colors of one type of yarn, or not all the colors of that yarn, but you would pick your colors from one type of yarn. So if it was Favorite, you get all your colors for Favorite. If it was Softly Baby, all from Softly Baby. I love this yarn. All color, all the shades you are gonna pick from the same, I love this yarn. So whatever yarn you're using, try to pick your colors from the one type. 
generally, always a good way to go. If you want the exact colors I am using, I will link those also in the comments under this video. So you can just click on each color in particular and it will take you to that exact yarn, whether it's Softly Baby or whether it is Favorite. So all of these will be linked in the description box down below and you can just go to that particular color and that yarn will be waiting for you right there. So now, temperature blanket update, how far I have gotten. I, this is up to date except for today because I don't have a high temperature yet. It is still early, it's like lunchtime. So this is current up until today. Are you ready? Isn't that great? Oh no, it's upside down. <laughs> Let me do that again. Now, are you ready again? Here we go. There we are. So the hot purple, well actually the really light purple is the hottest day. That is 32 and above. We did have a heat wave this year. And purple is 30 degrees. And the lavender, the lilac is 31. And then it goes down from there. And this orange there, that was a day we, it was only 20 degrees. Can you imagine? Am I showing you properly? Here. So this is like a moss stitch or a linen stitch, but I show you all about it in that tutorial. So check it out if you are interested. That is how far I've gotten. So this is more than three months. So double this is half the width of the blanket. So it's not gonna be too wide, it's gonna fit nicely across a bed. It'll be a great bed cover. Nice and thin, right? I love it. So this is my temperature blanket update. We work on it, or the next time I'll show it to you is gonna be after our Aussie edition live chat. That is the last Tuesday of every month and it is in my morning, eight o'clock in the morning in Nairobi. So depending what time of day that is for you. So in the West, it'll be in the evening. And in Europe, it'll be in the morning. And in Australia, it'll be in the afternoon. So last Tuesday of the month, we will be working on this together. And then the following podcast, I will be showing it to you of how it looks. So two more weeks will be added on. I think it's about that much for two weeks. So it'll be that much longer. How fun, right? So that is how my temperature blanket is coming along. And now it's time for your comments. Get my glasses back on. The first comment is from Vicki Brooker. Vicki says, I just wanna tell you how much I enjoy all your videos. I'm just learning to crochet and your wonderful energy and your infectious laughter makes it a lot of fun, thanks. Well, thank you, Vicki, that is so sweet. I'm so glad that you feel that way. I feel the same way. Making videos for you really helps me enjoy my hobby a lot. I don't feel like I'm wasting my time or doing something frivolous. I feel like I am sharing something with you and that makes it so much better for me. So I'm glad you feel the same way. The next question is from Susan Ryan. She says, on the replay, can't seem to catch you live. Love, love, love your videos. Just completed my second tulip blanket. Have a cakes and candles on the hook and another blanket of yours also on her hook. Becoming addicted to your tutorials. You're an amazing teacher. I need your content in my yarn life. Thank you so much. I try to make all of my patterns and tutorials like as easy as they can be. If there's a difficult step, I really do try to get rid of that step or make it easy to remember to do it. I really try to simplify everything down so that Crochet can just be really fun and not stressful. You don't have to guess what you're doing. I'll totally tell you what you're doing and how to make it easier and sometimes even how to fix a mistake. So thank you so much for that, thank you. And our last comment is from Elle. Elle says, beautiful pattern and fast. We'll be making these for gifts and donation. Thank you for the tutorial. Well, thank you so much, Elle. And what she's talking about is the Sunday Granny baby blanket. I'm gonna be showing you my drunken blankets in the future, in the near future. This is the Sunday Granny. Really nice pattern for spring, actually. 
And why it's called a sundae is because you're making a scoop and then you're putting a cherry in it. So you're doing scoops and cherries, scoops and cherries, scoops and cherries, all the way along, one row repeat. So you can really get like stuck into it and relax and enjoy just crocheting. And you end up with like a gorgeous blanket at the end of that. Isn't that so pretty? I just love it. So this is the Sunday Granny and I'm glad you liked it so much, Elle. And our last comment is from Karen Ilari. She said, I would love to see a walk around of your area as well. Love your videos, always fun stuff. I've been a lifelong crocheter, I'm 65, and still learn new things from you. Well, thank you so much, Karen, that's awesome. I would also like to take you on a little walk around my craft space. So let me grab my little phone, that'll be easier to take you around, and let me show you. So starting over here, I have my grandpa's rocking chair. Well, I guess it was also my grandma's, but my grandpa used to rock me in this chair when I was a kid. He used to get jelly beans out of his pocket in that chair. It has been recovered twice. I recovered it even a couple years ago here in Nairobi, but the original fabric when I was a kid, not the original, but the original by the time I was a kid, because it's a really old chair, was like an ivory and a beige velvet. So I found this yarn and I'm like turquoise green and that brown from my childhood. I'm like, all right, that's great. So recovered it, but that is really my grandpa's chair. So I love it and it makes me just feel happy and special when I'm in this room. Then I showed you this last week, but I have my binders and all of my matching or my rainbow yarn to go with the binders on that side. On the top shelf, I have all of my variegated, most of my stuffies are washed or my pillows are washed and put back up. So all my yarn is there. I have my yarn ball winder at the edge of my cabinet. And then this is where my whips live. And then this is where my whips live, all my works in progress. I have a tin or a, bu a bucket where I keep my whip tins and all my tape measures. I'm missing a lot of tape measures. My kids use these as yo-yos. <laughs> so they are all over the house. I bought 24 and I probably have less than a dozen now. But the kids love them and they are cheaper than yo-yos. They're like two, they were $2.50. Now I think they're $3.50. But worth it just for that. These are empty baskets. So I can just grab a basket, grab a whip tin and a tape measure and get myself all hooked up. Ha, <laughs> hooked up, get it? My extra hooks. I used to keep them in a case, but it just takes too long to get them out. So I just leave them here. Plus there's my pen from Jacqueline. Love my pen, Jacqueline. It writes really, really great. Like a really nice dark navy ink and it's so smooth. It's so that's really special. I have extra knitting needles here in case I need them. My bird's nest fern waiting to be made. So just the sticks are sitting in there. I still have to do that as a tutorial. Have to do this as a tutorial. That is my mushroom tissue house. Someone was saying it looks like a cupcake. I'm like, yes, it does actually. This is where I keep my stitch markers. So all of these stitch markers, each of them matches a different cro clover crochet hook. So I can just pop in a stitch marker to my work in progress and then always know what I'm using in the future or what hook I used. Jar of my Christmas pickles right back there. My yarn ball winder, really handy for frogging your work or removing your stitches. And no, it does not hit anything, but I'm sure it's pretty close. These are my button skewers for making crochet flowers. So I just sat down one day. It took a long time, actually. This is about three hours of work getting all of those buttons on to the barbecue skewers. So now whenever I make a flower, I can just come over and pick a center. My string of pearls plant, my bigger string of pearls plant. I have a couple of them. My ultimate roses. I love, I love that bouquet a lot. This is an old light fixture from one of my apartments in Vancouver back in the day. I replaced it with track lighting when track lighting was everything, but I loved it. And now I just put a bunch of my old granny squares inside just so it has a little bit of color. And then it sits in a, I think this used to be an ashtray. I got it at a secondhand shop also back in Canada. I love it. I think it's so cool. So that just sits together. A reclaimed light fixture and an old ashtray. 
And now that is my little bit of happiness right there. Just makes me feel happy when I see it. It's not fancy, but I love it. Then we have a big pom-pom. This, I think, was almost 100 grams of each of these colors. So I don't know how, how much of a fan I am of pom-poms. I didn't know it uses so much yarn. And this is a container I got from Litza also. And that is where I put my little scraps this year. So it started with all my Christmas colors at the very bottom. And whoo, that's from my bedspread or my bed, the new, the Celtic not bedspread I have now. So that just sits there and I can just add my tails to that. My small yoga ball cover, this is with Hexicardies. No, this is with Zigzag Hexies. That's what I made that one with. My disco ball, because it's not a party without a disco ball. That's a fact. So that is my one little area right there. Then behind, I have my work, my finished objects. So these are all great. All of my finished objects kind of all sit here. Eventually, I'd like finished objects up there as well, but I have to use some yarn first. And here, oh, there's Sedai. That is my lion head. You can see how big he is. He's very big, very big, very heavy. This is the lampshade. I probably showed you this already. This is the lampshade I made for my grandma's, my grandma Ruth's lamp. Where well, that's up there. I keep my ribbons here in this little shelf. Now these are all like for decorating Christmas presents, birthday presents, parties in general. Really cheap and cheerful. I think one of these rolls is only like $2. So it's not a big investment, but they look really great. So I keep a little collection of that. This is a painting that my girlfriend did for me for my wedding. Isn't that sweet? She lives in Nanaimo now on the island, Vancouver Island. So that stays there. It also makes me happy. Little yarn balls in a spaghetti canister. Why not? A little plant I made. Just like a fake crocodile stitch of some sort just to do like a little flat succulent and that pretty much finishes this area right so that is over there then we have my big crochet yoga ball cover this is great i love that one so much so it just sits on a plant stand that's like a little metal plant stand it just sits there oh i put up my thermometer today so it's 25 degrees in the yarner right now. That is my mess back there. Those are my paper towels and my paper towel collection. We're not going back there because that's a mess. We'll show it one day when I can be proud of it. It's not today. This is my small string of pearls plant. So that just sits up there. My pumpkin, some yarn that I have to put away. That's just a mess. Two more pumpkins, a big fat yarn. And this is actually, I love it too much. This is actually a Christmas garland. We call it fire and ice because depending where you look at it, like see underneath there, it looks orange. So depending on the light, it either looks like it's on fire or it is frozen. So we call that our fire and ice garland. And I just wrapped it up and put it in the armory because I love it. And then of course we saw this already. My cotton blends yarn. So everything not acrylic. I think there's a couple acrylics in there. Like I think this is acrylic. So that's cheating. And oh, this is technically acrylic too. Like my fuzzy, my chenilles are also over here, but not standard acrylic goes on this shelf right there. And then on this side, this is my new little area. So I put a little mirror and I have my mannequin back here. This is one of my favorite lamps ever. I got it at a secondhand store for $2. It still says on it somewhere, $2 on the edge it's in marker you see i have to be able to show you don't tell me i got my two dollars off i love my two dollars well maybe my two dollar marker tag got wiped off but it was two dollars and i love it so if i turn off the light there that burn was from before it came like that but it looks like a little avocado tree like isn't that like just too cool anyway i love it and my grandpa's horse my grandpa's horse 
I love him a lot. So he just kind of sits here. I did try to polish him up, but it just took a really long time. So I polished one bum cheek and it took me like a day. So now I'm like, okay, he's not going to be polished, but he's got a shiny butt. This is my Easter grass. It's its new house is over here. These are my Easter eggs. So I decorated for Easter. <laughs> These are just yarn, 100%. There's no stuffing or anything. So they're actually quite easy to do. I have not done a tutorial yet. And I didn't do a tutorial this year either. So maybe yet next year if I remember. Now I got to get them all back in there. Stay. Okay, there we go. And then my springtime bouquet sits over here. I want to do a shorter version so that it looks more like, a, you know, like lower, but not today. Not doing that today. And then I moved over a little bookcase for this space because it's just kind of sitting there. Oh, and look at this. This is my motto, and I hope it's your motto too. Don't look at your feet to see if you're doing it right. Just dance, right? Don't look at your hook. Just get going. Just get a move on. And then I have my pillows just stuffed to kind of put up this, fill up the space, but I have not totally decorated it yet. And then I just put my books over here as well because the shelves are strong enough. This is actually like a good shelf, <laughs> not like my other flimsy ones. So it can totally support the weight of my books. So they are just sitting there. And then this is the patio, which I love. Don't you just feel better already out here? It's so great. And there's my bouquets that wake me up in the morning. You just kind of come out here and you see your gorgeous purple flowers waiting for you. And those bloom 100% of the time all year long. It's amazing. Oh, there's Marvin over there. You see Marvin behind the tank? Hi, Marv. I don't see anybody else. So Tang lives in that tank there. Am I pointing to the right tank? I think so. Tang lives in that one. I have tilapia and that little guy over there. And then that's the kids swimming pool, but they haven't swam in it lately. And then we just kind of sit out here, relax and crochet, look around. And I also have my thermometer out here. So outside, where can we see the red? There we go. Outside, is 22 and a half or 74 outside so that is my little balcony right by the urinary then i have a little crochet bed on this side and my tv so i can totally hang out here and crochet I'm going to be changing the bed. I don't, I'm not crazy about the headboard. I find it too straight. It's not relaxing enough. So I'm going to swap out this bed, move it around, but not today. Another disco ball, because you really cannot have enough to get that feeling, <laughs> that feeling. And then on this side, there is a, a sofa for the kids to watch TV. And we have little stools around and everything. So um, the kids can hang out as well. And that is the yarnery. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I'm waiting for you in that video right there and stay hooked.